Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, nominees and future winners. For the first time since the pandemic, I'm delighted to say we are all back together. The panda what? I don't even remember that time. It's tricky at work sometimes, but delighted we're through it. Uh, so in previous years, we streamed uh, the awards ceremony, but I'm delighted to say we're all back in the room together, fully in person. I'm Chris Harvey. Uh, I work for STV News here in Aberdeen, Grampian Television previously, uh, all still the same company, and I started here in 2000. So it's an absolute privilege to be here. As I said, I've been lucky enough through work to travel uh, to many places in the world and many places in my career previously. But when I moved back to Aberdeenshire, I didn't know I was going to be here forever, but I know now I will be here forever. I just think it's the most astonishing county. It has everything, everything for a family, everything for an individual, everything for a company. It's a brilliant place to educate your kids, to bring them up. I absolutely love it. And I bore people to death everywhere I go about what a brilliant place this is. Now, yes, I'm emceeing tonight, but I will not be doing this on my own. No, no, no. Please welcome to the stage, Aberdeenshire, Lord Provost. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Aberdeenshire Provost. Judy White. Thank you very much, Chris. And don't worry, it's an easy mistake to be made. It happens frequently. But as I tell people, I'm the country one. <laughs> the city has the Lord promised. So, but thank you again, Chris. And good evening to everybody here tonight. I would just like to start by echoing Chris's comments um, about what a privilege it is to be here tonight and to see you all in the room uh, together. I've been involved with Inspiring Aberdeenshire um, in the past, first of all, as a guest at events like this, um, just um, in, the, in my early years as a, as a counsellor then watching um, the events happen online as we had to move to during the, the COVID pandemic. Um, and then now as provost, uh, last year we hosted the event online and had a, a, an, an evening here for the winners to, to pick up their uh, wonderful trophies. But um, this is the first time that we've been back in the room together for a number of years and I think it's very special and I'm very proud to be here, um, to be with you all in the room tonight. So thank you for joining us for this ceremony. There are so many people um, to welcome and to thank this evening. First of all, um, I think we owe the choir um, who came and performed for us. Um, they were joined us from Balmedy Primary School. And also the Pipers who greeted us at the door on our arrival this evening. They joined us from Meldrum Academy. Uh, we had Ella Mickey, Rue Jackson and Graham Small. And I think we should, although they're not here to hear it, I think we should give them another round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> So it's also my pleasure uh, to welcome all uh, finalists and your families uh, and your friends to, to the room this evening. Also, uh, fellow councillors, council colleagues, uh, our very important sponsors, the judges and guests. So thank you all for being here. Joining us this evening, as we've heard, are a range of companies who have kindly sponsored the event to help us champion our community heroes. And we really couldn't put this event on without them, so we're superbly grateful for that. And over the years, we've heard the stories of hundreds of finalists, um, and just, they're just a small selection of the many nominations that we receive each year. But we'll talk about that more later. But for now, I just wanted to extend my welcome to everybody. My personal thanks for you all joining us this evening, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you. Right, are you ready? Are you ready? Right, our first award. Let's see what we're going on to tonight. So it's our Aberdeen Futures Award. Now this is sponsored by NEOS Networks. Thank you very much to them. And it's a pleasure if I can ask Councillor David Keating, the Chair of the Education and Children's Services Committee, alongside John Alloy from NEOS Networks, to come to the stage to hand out this award. Please welcome them to the stage, thank you.
so I'm up first. My instructions are simple. Don't muck it up. <laughs> um, and it is truly a pleasure to be here tonight. And it's an even bigger pleasure to get to announce the first award of the night. The Aberdeenshire Futures Award is presented to a young individual under the age of 25 who has shown great leadership and helped to inspire and motivate others in support of a local cause. So we have three, I believe, and let's have a look at the finalists in this category. There is probably not time to list all the amazing things Abby Kato has done in her six years at Turriff Academy. Known to all as a kind, thoughtful and caring individual, she is empowered by helping others to achieve success. She is a true campaigner for the underdog and motivates even the least confident to have a go. Her can-do approach to life is a breath of fresh air and even when she is facing her own challenges, she always looks to make life better for others. She was Turriff United Youth Under-16's Girls Team Captain and Player of the Year 22-23. She volunteers in the community. She supported after-school clubs, particularly hockey and girls football, and led several training sessions. Abby also supported the enhanced transition for some of the most vulnerable children, moving from P7 to S1, organized charity events and was house captain. Now that Abby moves away from the academy, her future looks incredibly bright. But it is fair to say that she will be missed by everyone in the school and beyond. Vadim Kapluk joined Mintlow Academy last year having come to Scotland from Ukraine. In his previous school, he had been a pupil leader of a number of schools and very proactive in supporting his community and peers. It would be fair to say that he continued this when he arrived at Mintlaw. Very quickly, he established himself as a popular member of the school community and could often be seen high-fiving students. He was quick to share how much he loved the school telling everyone who asked that it was an amazing place. Mintlow Academy's colours are blue and yellow, and he often joked that they had adopted his. Among his accolades, he was made deputy head boy, started an online newspaper, was successful in his prelim exams, and was well known to all in the school as a source of positivity and optimism. When the nominations came in for this award, he was in Poland, having agreed to travel to be on an interview panel to secure a US visitor's visa in order to visit his girlfriend, also Ukrainian, who lives with her family in New York. The lengths Vadim goes to others is extraordinary, and he is an asset to the Ukrainian community, to Mintlo, and he will continue to be wherever his life takes him next. Money Musk Primary have a well-established school choir with children from all ages taking part. Back in March, they were due to be part of a competition in Aberdeen. The children had supported the elderly father of the head teacher for a number of years, for example, writing Christmas card labels for him when they heard his writing was deteriorating and calling him regularly with updates on how their days were going. They were keen he was able to come to see them perform, but his health would have made that difficult. And so, they launched Operation Rainbow Surprise. On the way to the competition, they stopped at his house and performed to him in his front garden, a plan they unanimously agreed on just to make his dreams come true. When they started to perform, there was not a dry eye in the house. Even the bus driver was overcome with emotion. The sight of 30 children silently arranging themselves in his garden and then singing and dancing their hearts out when he opened the curtains was almost too much. Their nomination for this award is to recognize that these young people encompass every value and belief that the awards stand for. And despite this being a one-off example, they regularly go above and beyond to support their local and wider community.
absolutely. Wasn't that great? Um, congratulations to all our young finalists. I was told I couldn't have three winners, so we have to have a winner. And if I can work out how to do this, I'll tell you who it is. And the winner is Abby Cato. Abby Cato, thank you very much. Thank you very much to our first winner of the evening. Well, you've seen what the form is. It's absolutely superb. We've got another award. Now, I, the council said it as well. It's absolutely true. It is impossible to decide who should be the winner of these categories. So even if you have not been successful tonight, in our eyes, in the eyes of everyone in the county, you are all absolutely winners and so deserving. So thank you very much for your efforts. Now, next up is our Inspirational Volunteer Award. And please welcome to the stage, Councillor Alan Turner, Chair of the Infrastructure Services Committee to present this award. Thank you. <laughs> could say what my instructions were. David got it right, copy that. <laughs> if David got it wrong, figure out how to fix it. <laughs> but seriously, no, I would agree completely with what David said. This is one of the things that you know, we look forward to. It's all about you, recognizing you and your contribution to Aberdeenshire. I'm just lucky enough to actually be stand up here to present. Thank you for that. So without further ado, our second award tonight is the Inspirational Volunteer Award. This is given to the individual or group who has gone the extra mile by volunteering for a local initiative that makes a difference to the lives of others or communities. And with that, we're going to look at the videos of the finalists. <laughs> Lindsay Singers is the co-founder of LATNEM, a mental health support group for mums and people giving birth. She works at a demanding job, is an amazing mum herself, but also someone who finds time, passion and compassion to support service users. Lindsay is passionate about breaking the stigma surrounding maternal mental ill health and pushes for effective prevention, detection and treatment of perinatal mental illness. From peer supporting at meetings to gruelling hours on the accounts and applying for funding, she rises to every challenge always looking for a way to do more. Lindsay has a wonderful listening ear as a mentor, helping mums to navigate services and to find their own inner strengths. Her hard work and dedication have been fundamental to LATNEM's continued success. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say she has saved lives. Thank you for keeping me alive is just one of the many positive things that service users have said about her. Lindsay is one in a million. These awards show us that many amazing people volunteer and give up their own time to support their communities. And Angie is an example of how one person can use their voice to advocate for others. She is a public representative within the Aberdeenshire Health and Social Care Partnership and has spent five years providing advice and feedback, advocating for community views, communicating with communities and making sure the voice of the people of Aberdeenshire is heard. 
Her voluntary roles require hard work and dedication, and she invests a huge amount of her own time so she can provide an informed and valuable contribution across her roles. The courage and determination shown in her commitment to this work, whilst coping with her own personal challenging circumstances, is an inspiration. She brings her lived experience to the partnership and is invaluable to making sure services are shaped and delivered to meet the needs of users and the unpaid carers that support them. Angie is one of those people who makes the people she meets want to be better. A true inspiration. Russ Crichton is known in Bankery as Mr. Skatepark, having spent much of the last six years dedicating himself to the creation of the new facility for the town. He is an outstanding example of what can be achieved with passion, drive and commitment, and has earned the respect of the young people involved in the skate park project, and indeed of the whole community of Bankery. The focus of this nomination is around the impact he has had on the young people involved, giving them respect and the right to have their views included and considered. He has provided explanations and kept them up to date with the progress and tempered frustration when progress was not being made. He gave young people reasons to stay engaged with the project by providing diverse activities for them to take part in alongside the necessary attendance at community and planning events. He guided young people on how to behave at these events to get the best outcome and he has been instrumental in helping young people see that they are valued and that they can contribute to society. He encouraged them to believe that anything is possible when young people are supported to achieve their potential. Angie Much. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Andy Much. And thank you very much to Councillor Alan Turner as well. Now, it is just fantastic. You'll agree the standard of finalists is exceptionally high. And it also, it just amazes me, this is all just happening in our communities. It's something that happens often without fanfare, often without enough fanfare. So thankfully tonight, uh, we're able to put some of that right. Now, our next award is our Heart of Aberdeenshire Caring Award. And I'd like to say it's sponsored by TPS Fruit and Veg. So please welcome to the stage for the Heart of Aberdeenshire Caring Award, Councillor Anne Stirling, Deputy Leader of Aberdeenshire Council and Chair of the Communities Committee, and Sharon Hosey from TPS Fruit and Veg. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Just give Sharon a moment just to join us as well. So. Okay, thank you very much indeed. And like my colleagues, I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you this evening. Um, and it's great, as the Provost has said, um, to be here in person. The Heart of Aberdeenshire Caring Award is for a person or group who has had a significant and positive impact on the lives of vulnerable people. Our nominees care for others, either through the course of their employment, 
care for a family member, or act as a volunteer carer. So let's take a look at our finalists this year. Garth Entwistle has selflessly supported so many groups and organisations in the Udney community throughout the past three decades. Garth was chair of the management committee of the Dr Spence Memorial Hall in Udney Green and was instrumental in securing the tens of thousands of pounds required to renovate and improve this invaluable community space. He was a driving force behind the creation of the Udney Community Trust, whose wind turbine generates funds for community causes. Garth was leader of the Boys' Brigade for 25 years, and generations of young people in the area benefited from involvement in this organisation. Garth was an office bearer in the Udney Community Council. He was an elder and long-standing treasurer of Udney and Pitmedden Church. Grant Entwistle cares. He demonstrates how through energy, enthusiasm, commitment and zeal, you can get initiatives off the ground and maintain them. Fiona has been nominated because of her outstanding contributions to mental health awareness and support through the charity Shirley's Space. As one of the driving forces behind the charity, Fiona has dedicated herself to improving the lives of those who are struggling with mental health issues, having lost her husband and youngest son who took their own lives. She has created a welcoming and supportive environment that offers a range of services, including counselling, group therapy and peer support. Fiona's tireless efforts have had a profound impact on the lives of many individuals who have found solace and support through the charity. Her passion, dedication and commitment to the cause of mental health have been an inspiration to all who have worked with her. Fiona has also been an active advocate for mental health awareness in the wider community. She has worked with local schools, businesses and organisations to promote mental health education and resources, reaching out to those who may be suffering in silence. Fiona's impact on the Aberdeenshire community has been immeasurable and her contributions to mental health advocacy and support have been truly inspiring. Caden Simpson is a pupil at Dales Park Primary in Peterhead. Last Christmas he saw an advert which highlighted that there were children that would not get presents at Christmas time. This was enough to make the kind-hearted Caden want to use his pocket money to buy presents for these children. When his dad posted this on Facebook, the local community was inspired by Caden and they also stepped up. He started a local movement which resulted in donations of Christmas presents and money for vulnerable children, which began to pour into the school and to his family. A GoFundMe page was created and he worked with the Bare Necessities charity to help collect donations and deliver them. His thoughtfulness and generosity touched so many and this in turn helped a local charity make Christmas a bit more special for so many vulnerable families. I think we can all agree that the fantastic finalists and congratulations to you all. But in true Oscar fashion, the winner is Caden Simpson.
Amazing. Caden, I'll tell you one thing. I thought I looked okay in a blue suit. But I'll tell you what, you have killed it tonight, son. Killed it. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, do you know what? I don't do that many of these kind of events. But this one tonight reminds me of my wedding day because my cheeks are already going numb. <laughs> uh, just smiling all the way through. So, no, absolutely brilliant. And what, what inspirational stories. And this is all just happening in and around us on a daily basis. Now, why are we here today? Well, we're here to celebrate the people, the communities of Aberdeenshire. But it does go hand in hand with the people that make our community, make our county work. And that's Aberdeenshire Council. Between the communities, between the council, the work of the councillors and the council staff, it's really what keeps this place ticking. And it's something that I'm a really strong advocate of. I was boring, not the Lord Provost, the Provost, uh, just about how I think it's such an important thing. Everyone, it's an easy place to have a moan about the council, to have a moan about this. But if you actually look at what they do and they give to us every day in our daily lives, we would really miss it if it wasn't there. So we've made a short film just to paint a picture about all the work that the council's been doing since we last met. There's something special about Aberdeenshire. It isn't just our mountain to see, it's our people, our businesses, our communities and our collective determination. We work together to make Aberdeenshire the place we call home. It's been a year of big achievements for the Council. The new Gairnshield Jubilee Bridge. The Stonehaven Flood Protection Scheme. Leveling Up Investment, which is a commitment of investment in Macduff Marine Aquarium and the creation of a cultural quarter for Peterhead. Supporting and celebrating our Ukrainian friends who arrived in Aberdeenshire. We've refurbished museums and Live Life Aberdeenshire facilities. We've worked with young people in schools and apprenticeships to help them succeed. We've worked with businesses to help them recover and flourish. We work together, the council and our communities, to support what matters where you live. Together, we're working on place plans, which put every community at the heart of setting its own direction and future. Together, we're helping prepare our communities to be resilient, be that in the face of winter storms, the cost of living, or incidents which affect us. The strongest communities come together in the face of adversity and step up for each other. We promote and share local funding opportunities for communities to maximise. Like the Rural Communities Challenge Fund and a grant scheme coming soon in Banff and Macduff to fund improvements based on what the community wants. The things we do, we do really well. Our North Home Service team was recently rated very good by the Care Inspectorate. A joint inspection of services for children and young people at risk of harm rated the partnership as very good. The Aberdeenshire Bothy project won at the Scottish Transport Awards. 
in recognition of the positive contribution made towards supporting active travel journeys. We know we have lots to work on. Areas which we want to work on with you included active travel, road safety and getting broadband improvements for all. And the ever important projects in our communities to increase recycling rates. Work to do together, but a year which we can all be proud of. Thank you for what you do to help us keep moving Aberdeenshire forward. Fantastic. Right, our fourth award tonight is the Cultural Award, which is sponsored by Oxygen Finance. And to introduce it, give a round of applause, is Councillor Ron McHale, our Deputy <laughs> Provost. Fine jacket, Ron. Fine jacket. I thought yours was the same, right? <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Wasn't that review um, of the, what we've done in the last year fantastic? Just uh, makes you feel very proud to be an Aberdeenshire councillor, uh, or an, uh, an Aberdeenshire director, or a member of Aberdeenshire Council. So thanks for having me back tonight. Um, and the award that I'm going to be uh, making is, is, a, is for an individual or community group who has made an excellent contribution to the promotion of local culture in Aberdeenshire. And here are the finalists for 2023. Doric Books is a community interest company publishing books solely in Doric. So far they have produced six picture books aimed at children which can be found in over 30 shops across the North East as well as on their website. They also carry out community engagement activities including Doric Rhyme Time for Bairns, Doric Blethers in Care Homes and community groups Doric Storytelling and Workshops in Schools. They have given numerous talks to Rotary Clubs, WRIs, etc., and recently a storytelling session to the Buchan Heritage Society. Their aim is to promote and increase the uptake of the Doric in speaking, writing and reading. Jackie is a retired teacher who has taken her passion to the Doric books world and she dedicated her time to raising the profile of Doric in schools and in communities. Thanks to Jackie, this group continues to help children and young people retain an important connection to their linguistic heritage. These four boys from Merns Academy started a band during lockdown called Pitna Moon. Through their performances, they have brought the community together, supporting them at their gigs and listening to their songs online. They single-handedly formed the group through the love of music and performing. They have sought out opportunities such as the On The Road event, where they toured the north of Scotland and were one of the only groups in the tour to host a sell-out gig in their local area in Aberdeen's tunnels. They have motivated and inspired others to follow their dreams, try out their musical arts and support their local friends. These boys are determined and passionate about what they do and have an exciting future ahead of them. The Stonehaven Fireballs Ceremony is an annual event which attracts crowds of up to 10,000 each year from around the world. The parade, which involves around flaming balls of fire being swung then thrown into the harbour, has to be seen to be believed, but brings with it a lot of organisation and planning. A group of volunteers organise this event every year and have dealt with the ever-growing demands placed on them to keep the event both spectacular and safe. 
Each year they rise to the challenge and go above and beyond to make sure this hugely loved event for both locals and visitors goes ahead each year. It involves everything from safety event planning, to road closures, to arranging RNLI support, to security and marshalling, to crowd management, to marketing and much, much more. They do whatever it takes to make sure this centuries-old tradition, designed to ward off evil spirits in the new year, becomes a reality. Some incredible work there, all worthy winners, but the winner is Jackie Ross of Doric Books. That's absolutely superb. Now, we'll give it a shout out quickly for Pit and the Moon because I've seen them and they're excellent. So, check them out when you get finished here tonight. <laughs> we bit of Merne's bias coming through. Apologies. Apologies. Right, that was fantastic. And thank you very much to Ron McHale for his excellent presentation skills. Now, please, our next award is the, and this one is a broad category because where do you begin and when do you end? Beautiful. Aberdeenshire Environmental Award, which I'm delighted to say is sponsored by the InStock Group. Now, tonight it's presented by Councillor Sarah Dixon, Chair of the Sustainability Committee, and she's joined by Neil Taws from InStock. Please welcome them to the stage. Good evening, everyone and what amazing finalists and winners we've had so far. It's my privilege tonight to present the award for the beautiful Aberdeenshire Environmental Award. This is an award for an individual or group who is working hard to help nurture and enhance our area's natural beauty through environmental initiatives. We know the drill, let's hear more about the finalists. <laughs> The Inverurie Environmental Improvement Group is a non-profit organisation established in 2003 with a mission to improve the local environment and enhance the quality of life for the community. They have been instrumental in promoting environmental awareness and sustainability in Inverurie through various initiatives and projects. The group works in partnership with local businesses, schools, organisations and individuals to drive positive change in the community. The group has transformed neglected areas into vibrant, thriving spaces that promotes diversity, provides opportunities for community engagement and improve the appeal of the town. Through their commitment to environmental sustainability and community engagement, they have created a lasting legacy that will benefit the town for years to come. Wally Matthew has been working on the grounds within the Medin Centre, Udney Community Trust Community Hub, since 2020. Back when he started, the grounds left a lot to be desired, overgrown and strewn with rubbish. It is now transformed into a beautiful green space thanks to Wally. He makes everyone passing by or coming into the centre to feel welcome. He shares the produce. He shares the glut of vegetables he grows with the community cafe and with passers-by. He is on hand for gardening advice and information and he gives everyone who passes his attention and time. 
He looks after the grounds. He maintains the grounds. He does all the planting and weeding. He engages with local children and ran a sunflower competition last year. Nothing is ever a problem, and thanks to him, this is an area to be proud of. Friends of the Den have been working with the council to establish a large biodiversity area within the Den area in Turriff. They have involved the local primary school pupils, local youth organisations and other voluntary groups to introduce native wildflowers to enhance several biodiversity areas, turning them into beautiful areas of colour. They have also planted many new trees and joined the Queen's green canopy by planting new fruit trees in her memory. Friends of the Den have welcomed hundreds of volunteers who are all keen to improve not only the look of the area, but also to provide a biodiversity area for local wildlife, including bees. Not only do they source the plants, wildflower plugs, bulbs, trees, etc. They also teach and encourage the younger generations to take pride in their community. What a fantastic difference they all make. And so the winner is the Friends of the Den. Oh, fantastic. Now, that must have been a very, very hard category to judge. And uh, Wally, I have to say, I think the council may be contacting you about your recycling initiative for <laughs> trespassers. Now, we are moving on to our next award, which is the Local Hero Courage Award. And to present this, please welcome on stage Aberdeenshire Council Chief Executive, Jim Savage. <laughs> Good evening to you all. It's a real pleasure to join you here this evening and to be able to give out this award. It's the Local Hero Courage Award in which we hear about people who, in the face of adversity, have shown courage, bravery and dedication to helping overcome a difficult situation. So let's look at this year's finalists. <laughs> Mario Chiru ran the local shop and post office in Balmedy for nearly 10 years. Throughout that time, he had been an unfailingly kind and generous member of the community. He arranged for home deliveries during the COVID lockdowns and frequently went out of his way to find items the big supermarkets were struggling to provide. His shop continued to be vital in supporting the community especially vulnerable members of the community, and he arranged deliveries for those customers who struggled to get out and about. He said, I have treated people like I wanted to be treated. I have lived in different communities before, but this is now my community. This community cared about me. This community shared my pain, shared my joy, and has always been there for me. In other words, this is not my community. This is my family. If you're looking for a hero in the face of adversity, look no further than Amanda Wilson. 2019 was on many levels a hard time for Amanda. Let down, badly treated, and left struggling with her mental health. 
things got very dark. But Amanda turned that around. Soon she started crafting again, got back into working to establish a food bank where she lives, and is currently involved with the South Aberdeenshire and Merns Mums and Business Group, where she provides advice and mentoring. She is motivated by helping people in their time of need. It takes extraordinary courage to come back from hard times and to use that to benefit other people around you. Tyrone Devlin is a very inspirational young man who has overcome all sorts of difficulties and adversities throughout his life. He was described by the nominator as one of the most kind and caring young people I have ever come across. Fiercely loyal to all his peers and to staff across the school and looks out for everyone emotionally. He helps out in his community, putting up decorations in the care home at Christmas or creating an enterprise project and gets stuck in helping the school janitors with whatever the school day throws at them. All of this in spite of the great challenges and setbacks he has encountered throughout his life. He understands his life journey and sees it as his strength. It is the way he has worked selflessly for others in the face of some significant adversity that makes him a hero. Nomination for this award will hopefully give Tyrone the recognition he truly deserves for being such an inspirational young man. I'm sure you'll agree three very inspiring and three very worthy finalists here, but of those three, our winner this evening is Tyrone Devlin. Tyrone, congratulations, congratulations. Absolutely fantastic. It just, it's stunning. It's just inspiring what people do and decide to do with their free time when they could be doing anything else other than these brilliant community feats. Fantastic. Now, we're up to our penultimate award. One of my favorite words, but not to say it on the autocue because it's too long and it'll go across two lines and I'll say it wrong. So I just usually say second last at that point. So our penultimate award of the night is our Community Spirit Award. We've seen plenty of that already tonight, but we've got more brilliant finalists for you. Now, this award is sponsored by FES, FES, and the council leader, Gillian Owen, is here to introduce the award and she will be joined by Peter Henderson, from our sponsors, Fez. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage. I did my best not to trip up. I'm delighted to be here tonight to introduce the Community Spirit Award. Uh, this award goes to an individual or group who has supported a cause or project which helps to foster a spirited, embracing and vibrant local community. Let's have a look at the finalists in this category. Emma Sivright is a mum of three and works full time at Home Start North East Aberdeenshire. She juggles work and home life along with being a leader for Girl Guides in Ellen. And amongst all of that, she manages to devote her time to Home Start. 
always looking for ways to raise money and run events. She has been at the centre of two toddler groups in Peterhead and Crimmond, where parents of the community are invited to the group, completely free to interact and play with children and develop their skills. She runs workshops with the local community to raise awareness of cooking healthily, budgeting and meal prepping. Emma is a vital part of Homestart. In fact, she is at its heart and an asset to the charity and local community. The Gordon Schools Care Group in Huntley are in their second year of working closely and making links with the local community. It was set up to give a voice to care-experienced young people. The care group have worked very closely with Deverin Projects in Huntley and attended the local care home in Huntley to St Carol's at Christmas time, taking time to speak to residents and learn about their time in Huntley and Aberdeenshire. It is their exhibitions for which they may be most known. They work to organise, create and present photography, film and sound exhibitions that have contained content from all around Aberdeenshire, the natural beauty the area offers. The most recent exhibition was presented in the John Swan Atrium at school and was well attended by the public, family and friends. This exhibition contained images, video and sounds from Slane's Castle, local beaches and even recordings of them speaking. The care group continue to work closely with the community and have plans to create another exhibition in the future and hope to showcase from an even bigger scale. Jane Craigie lives in rural Aberdeenshire and was concerned about the loss of young people from our local rural communities. She started the Rural Youth Project in 2018 to encourage young people aged between 18 and 30 to build their leadership, activism and enterprise skills with the aim of encouraging them to move back, move to or remain in rural areas. Fueled by knowing that when young people leave rural areas, the ideas, energy and services also start to go. The project has supported many young people and includes local communities to listen and involve their young people. Jane included an ideas hack in Huntley last year. This involved the local Huntley Development Trust, Gordon Schools, Deverin Projects and the local youth development officer. As a result of this activity, the James Hutton Institute plans to focus on Huntley as one of the five areas in Scotland that will be a living lab for three years of in-depth research into community, challenges, activities and dynamics. Jane has supported and connected with well over 1,000 young people and has invested her own time and money into the initiative. For many years, Sandy Garvok has been helping others. He has raised money, delivered food parcels, chatted with isolated people, and helped with anything required. He has helped Ukrainian refugees and international fishermen. Three years ago, Sandy saw a need for more support for men to address mental health issues. So he started up a support group that grew rapidly. He now runs Men United and has supported hundreds of men locally. Thanks to his interventions, he has saved many lives and he is always at the end of a phone for people in need. To top it off, he is also a volunteer lifeboat chaplain and lifeboat crew with RNLI in Peterhead. Thank you, Sandy, for everything you do. My category has to be different. There are joint winners in this category. The Gordon Schools Care Group and Jane Craigie. Can I invite the Gordon Boys, the Gordon Schools Care Group up first and if Jane can follow.
thanks very much to all of our finalists, our winners, and to Peter and Gillian for presenting the awards. Now, we've got one more to do, one more. But it's the one thing. I'm very, very lucky. I just get to stand up here and look pretty. <laughs> I don't have to make these difficult decisions that our judges have been making over the last few weeks. So please welcome back on stage the Lord. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. joking. I've already promised uh, Judy one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, thank, thank you, Chris. Um, but this part of the evening is uh, really an opportunity for uh, me to explain a little bit about the, the judging process. I was um, so thrilled to be invited to join the judging panel this year. Uh, it was my first year on the panel. And I can tell you, it was a real joy to read through the many nominations that we received. And actually, they were, you know, they ran into the hundreds. Um, and just to learn of the deserving contributions that people have been making across Aberdeenshire, just in their own unassuming ways, going about their everyday lives, probably not realizing the impact that they're making. Um, and, you know, the consequence of their small actions being, you know, making such a huge difference uh, to the lives of others and making other people's lives better. So, as I say, it was, it was a, hum a humbling experience and a real inspirational experience to find out about the community efforts. And it was an incredibly difficult job whittling those um, nominations down to the finalists that we've seen tonight. And I think you can agree that from the standard of the contributions that people have been making from the films that we've seen tonight, it really was a very difficult job. And then to go further from that to, to choosing the finalists. But um, it wasn't just me doing the judging. We, the, we, we had a panel um, and I was ably joined by a number of colleagues to take part in this uh, process, which happened in secretive um, circumstances earlier this year. And it's been really hard to kind of contain the excitement for tonight and, um, uh, and knowing uh, who all we were going to be seeing here this evening. So I think there is a microphone going round and I was going to invite a couple of my judging panel colleagues to um, tell us a little bit about their experience. First of all, I'll ask uh, Council Chief Executive Jim Savage to talk about how he found it, because uh, Jim's a bit, I was going to say an old hand at this, Jim, Jim's been on the panel for a, 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 couple of, a few years now. So he brought some experience to the panel. So Jim, how, how, how was it for you? <laughs> it's the first time I've been yeah. accused of bringing experience to a panel, but I'll, I'll go with that. I mean, I've been involved in Inspiring Aberdeen Chat yeah. since I joined the authority. And it's one of the, it's one of the most uh, important and I think special evenings uh, that this evening we have each year coming together to celebrate in the way we do. But the judging is one of the hardest days each year as well. Mm. Uh, it's sort of come towards that day with trepidation, seeing as the provost said, hundreds of pages of nominations coming through there as well. Uh, I think it's great um, that we celebrate people in the way we do and we have so many people being nominated. And it's unsurprising, perhaps, as well, knowing how uh, wonderful and strong and resilient and caring our communities are across Aberdeenshire, that we have so many special people who are worthy of and do get nominated for recognition as well. So I think something I, I look forward to seeing each year. Huge trepidation uh, when we come around and see that judging pack, but very inspiring. And I'm just saying to uh, Lady Aberdeen, sort of just sitting here, uh, it's bringing about sort of memories of the trauma and the difficulty of trying to make those difficult decisions of judging who will be a finalist and indeed who will be a winner. But then huge um, uh, sort of pride and huge satisfaction uh, to see people smiling come on the stage, knowing that hopefully we've made the right decision for everyone this evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And I can't see you for this beautiful um, floral display, but uh, Joanna, Lady Aberdeen, um, also joined us on the panel this year um, in her role as Deputy Lord or Vice Lord Lieutenant for Aberdeenshire. And this was your first experience as well, Joanna. Um, can you tell us about how you found it? Thank you. Thank you very much, Provost. And I echo everything that you have said, and Jim as well. I must say it was an, just an extraordinary experience to be part of the judging panel. It was a very great honour and a privilege and very humbling uh, to read about the remarkable individuals and groups in our community. 
I, I, was, I was just quite overwhelmed. And as you have heard, it was an almost impossible task because there were so many excellent, excellent nominees. People who give of their time so generously, who are selfless, who are courageous, who are thinking of others and often in the face of adversity and their own personal challenges. Um, many, many congratulations to all nominees and to all the winners and um, it's really, really such a wonderful, it's so well named this, it is so inspiring. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> So on behalf of us all, my thanks to all the, the, uh, the, pan, the, the panel who helped with the, with the judging process. So all I can really say is that you know, we would all love this process to continue and to get even more nominations for Inspiring Aberdeenshire in the future. So perhaps everyone in the room, um, I'm sure we will be inspired after this evening, seeing um, some of the, the, the um, footage this evening. But if we could all get our thinking caps on about someone or a group uh, that we have in our community that we, we may like to nominate, uh, the nominations will be open soon and we'll post those on the Inspiring Aberdeenshire Facebook page and on the Council website. So please do watch that space and get the nominations in for next year. So this brings us um, now to move on to our final award for the evening. Am I right to just carry on with this, Chris? I'm just thinking, should I have... No, <laughs> no? You, is that okay? this is well, your moment. moment. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> it is the pinnacle of the event. It's the Inspiring Aberdeenshire Lifetime Achievement Award. This award was sponsor, sponsored by BP and uh, will be joined on stage by Stephen Christie from BP, if you'd like to... Oh, Stephen's already primed and ready, so thank you. So, yeah. so this award is um, presented in recognition of an outstanding contribution to a local cause, project, initiative or community. Um, these finalists really are an inspiration to others across Aberdeenshire. So let's have a look at the finalists. Craig Trail is an exceptionally selfless and ambitious person who has been the driving force behind the advancement and expansion of Fraserburgh Sea Cadets over the last 12 years. He was a Sea Cadet himself as a child and returned as a volunteer in 2009. He has propelled the cadets from temporary closure to a band of 50, a committee of six and a volunteer base of more than 20. They were operating from a single run-down building and now own a harbour-based station and a new headquarters. An impressive series of achievements in only nine years. Craig does all of what he does for the benefit of the cadets. He is motivated by the young people, the staff, the committee and the volunteers. He does it to see the joy on all their faces. For the time and effort he puts into the unit, the community is unendingly grateful. Ken Fairweather was one of the first ever volunteers of the Mairns and Coastal Healthy Living Network. He has dedicated over 20 years of his life to supporting the health and well-being of the over 50s in Kincardine and Mairns. The group serves some 200 older people per week through a variety of services, groups and activities to combat loneliness and isolation, financial hardship and exclusions. At the age of 87, Ken is still volunteering as a driver taking rurally and socially isolated clients to and from hospital, GP and other appointments benefiting their well-being. Ken is a fabulous example of what makes a community a community. His seemingly tireless dedication sets a shining example of what can be done. He is proof of the value that people of all ages can make to a community, and long may his stellar work continue. Kenny Thompson has been a stalwart of Contour Community for many years. He started with the Community Council around 2007 when he began his youth work and remained as an active member until recently. 
He was the chair from 2009 until 2012 and took on other office bearer roles during his time as a community councillor. Whilst on the community council, he was involved in the running of the summer festival, fireworks and floral displays, establishing local facilities for young people. And back in 2016, when Storm Frank hit Aberdeenshire, he was instrumental in helping residents then seek improvements to the flood defences for Contour. The growth and development of Contour over the time Kenny was involved was significant, and his commitment to Contour and its people over a significant number of years is worthy of recognition and all our thanks. What a um, high calibre of finalists we have, but there can be only one winner. So let's open the gold envelope and find out who the Lifetime Achievement winner is. And it is Craig Trail. Craig can't be with us this evening. He's actually been deployed in his other um, capacity in life, which is um, in, a, in a role connected with the armed forces. So I'm pleased to welcome Petty Officer Pat Davidson, who will accept the award on Craig's behalf. So thank you, Pat. Congratulations again to all our finalists in all the categories this evening. Uh, it's now my pleasure to, to say some thank yous for this evening. First of all, thank you to all our winners. Uh, well done to everyone. And to all our finalists in every category, you really are incredible. So I would like to ask everyone to take a well-deserved round of applause and please do feel free to stand, all the finalists, if you're able to. Thank you. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah. well, well done, everyone. Very well deserved. And thank you also to the people who nominated you. Um, you will know who you are, and many of you did keep that, um, that secret So uh, uh, when you were making your nominations for your unsung heroes. So I'd also like to thank uh, the fellow members of, my, uh, of the judging panel who were, as we heard, tasked with the incredibly difficult decision of choosing, choosing the finalists and winners for this evening. And again, to our performers, uh, they really did help to bring some sparkle to the evening, and I'm sure we've all really enjoyed the entertainment that we've heard throughout the evening. My special thanks to our corporate sponsors. Um, again, thank you for your support. As I said earlier, we couldn't hold this event without you. So we are incredibly grateful to the InStock Group, to TPS Fruit and Veg, and to Oxygen Finance and also to our headline sponsors, BP, Fez, and Neos Networks. If we could give them all a round of applause, thank you. I'd also like to thank Roy Stewart, um, Andrew Dunn, and team from uh, Stream Telev Television, who with, uh, have provided the AV um, facilities for this evening are recording this event and we'll be able to um, stream that out later so you can all enjoy the magic again. 
Um, thanks to Northeast Events, who've really made this room look so special with the lovely displays, and to Meldrum House um, for the room itself uh, and for making us feel so welcome. Thank you to all the staff who've looked after us this evening. And I'd like to give um, special thanks to the events team at Aberdeenshire Council through the customer and digital services uh, team and beyond who helped pull this event together from start to finish. As I'm sure you can imagine, there's a huge amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to make events like this happen. And I'm incredibly grateful to everybody in the team for doing that. They've been a tremendous support to me and um, to make sure that this, this event's run as smoothly as it has. Um, there's a little extra special treat for us tonight. Um, we've got a special thanks to say to Alison Carroll from Afford Academy, who has kindly made some tablet. Um, we had a discussion earlier about whether it's tablet, toffee, or fudge, depending on which part of Aberdeenshire you come from, but it doesn't really matter what it is. It's a wonderful sweet treat, and apparently it's award-winning. So there's some of that for us all to take home tonight, like a little party bag, isn't it? <laughs> um, and there's also um, a gift from uh, Palm Print in Mintlaw. So we've had contributions from all over Aberdeenshire for this event tonight, so thank you to them. And thank you, Chris for hosting this evening so expertly, um, keeping us all on track. And it's now my pleasure to hand over to you to close the evening. Thank you. Please give the Aberdeenshire Provost, Judy White, a round of applause. Thank you so much, Judy. That was so good. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I can't believe we're almost there. It's almost the end of this absolutely brilliant evening. What can I say? There's been so many thanks put out. Thank you again once. Just putting on this brilliant event, inspiring Aberdeenshire. It's made me smile all night. Hopefully, you'll be nominating people you know who are worthy finalists for next year. Just tell everyone. Tell everyone. Get them onto the Inspiring Aberdeenshire Facebook page tonight. Share it with everyone. Get them nominated and get everyone up here you know deserves to be recognised for their unstinting, brilliant contribution to our fantastic county. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to ask all of our finalists, finalists, not just our winners, our finalists and winners to come up to the stage for a big group picture. But before I go, thank you very much to everyone. You've made it such a brilliant evening to host. Thank you once again. Well done, everyone. <laughs>